casual chain Panera Bread today saying it's getting rid of more than 150 ingredients. It's like nothing else is left. <laughs> They're getting rid of mostly artificial sweeteners, colors, flavors, and preservatives. Now, Panera says it wants to serve food that's clean. But what's the real reason behind the move? With us now, Peter Shankman, marketing consultant and author of Zombie Loyalist. Peter, welcome to the show. So, good nutrition, good marketing. What do we have I think here? a little bit of both. I mean, you know, what I find ironic is the concept of eating clean, which has gained a lot of popularity over the past several years, involves eating exactly one thing that not bread. Eating clean means you're avoiding bread. Right, you're avoiding processed Panera foods, things bread. like that. Panera They're known bread, for their bread. You know, you don't think of eating. You don't. You go to your CrossFit class and then say, okay, let's go eat clean and go to Panera Bread. So I think there's a lot. There is some marketing behind it. Look, it's great to get rid of uh, high fructose corn syrup is evil. It's great to get rid of that. But I think a lot of those ingredients don't right, really have that much. We're going to get to play. that right now. Let's take a look at some of the ingredients they're getting rid of. Maltodextrin. Now, this is a sugar that that appears in beer. It's all over the darn place. Take a look at this one. Propylene glycol alginate. Do you want that in your food? It is a thickener and emulsifier uh, that, that is in a lot of foods. And finally, titanium dioxide. Guess what? It's a food dye. Doesn't that sound scary? I had a titanium dioxide meal the other day. It was amazing. White. It, so it makes the bread white. Uh, so they're getting rid of a lot of stuff here. And what I wonder in the question that remains sort of unasked here is, isn't it going to taste different? Well, that's the question. The real question is what's going to happen with the taste. The issue is people who go to Panera Bread, they're, you know, they might be healthier than, say, people who go to McDonald's, for instance, right, on the, on the, on the scale of that. But it's still very fast, casual food. So it's, it is processed food. You know, it does have ingredients that your grandma. My rule is if my grandmother wouldn't have recognized it as food, I won't eat it. Right. And so this is that's you know, the standard. That's that the standard was rule. the standard. The new standard is different, which leads me to wonder, will consumers, would they even care? Or that's no? the thing. I don't think they're going to care. I think that Panera is using this as it, again, there's nothing wrong with going a little bit healthier, which they've done. But there's definitely a PR component to this. And they're taking full advantage of it. They've been all over the media all today. Uh, they're following Chipotle. What advice. about the GMOs, my friend? So gen genetically modified. You know, I, 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 I think that. Um, that is sort of the standard that so many companies are setting And you know what the funny days. thing is? That is the standard, but essentially, if there have been so many studies that have said people don't understand what that actually means. So, you know, if you can say, hey, we're getting rid of stuff. People have heard of high fructose corn syrup. They understand that it's, they've seen pictures of it. It looks gross. Oh, okay, they can relate to that from a product perspective. GMO? GMO, they don't know what it means. What is genetically modified? How is this corn different from this corn? It looks the same. Okay, right? so if they're before eating you go it, further, I want to ask you about all these companies now. This is what you're expert right. in. They're all doing this, trying to cut the artificial ingredients, cut out the color the fake color cut out. Is this going to work and is it going to continue to grow and is it nothing but a fad that will go It's the away? salad bandwagon. If you remember in the late 70s, early 80s, McDonald's came out with salads, right? And they had a phenomenal run. They had like three quarters of, of huge growth from women who was like, oh, you can go to McDonald's and eat salad. Who came on after that? Burger King, Arby's, Roy Rogers. They all started doing the same thing. This is another fad where it says, hey, we're being healthier, we're being healthier. Everyone in the world considers themselves a food blogger now, right? And they're all talking about how they know. None of them have degrees, but they're all saying how they know best. So, yes, it is a fad. We're going to see it go next. There'll be something next, you know, the color brown or whatever it is. And people will get rid of foods that are brown or foods that are purple. And we'll see it go on and on. But That's what we do. there is really some... Uh underlying there's nothing wrong here. with making the food healthier and, and there isn't but the, the key is how much healthier are you making bread you know let's let's focus on that you're not turning bread, bread into I'm a skinless chicken bread. breast yeah i'm not anti I, I, I love believe me look at me you don't think i hate oh. bread but you know it gets to the point where it's not a chicken breast it's not a skinless chicken breast so at some point you have to say you know what i'm gonna go have a sandwich and so be it so be it i'm with you peter thanks for coming on the show tonight <laughs> i appreciate it